Welcome to the Sniper course. This is version 2.0 with some new content and a lot more thought behind each of our pieces we're going to go through. Week one, we're focused on power, how to generate power, how to use leverage, and common problems you're going to find as you try to evolve how your body generates power, the constraints we're going to use. And then finally, the footwork that we're going to use to add a jump and really maximize the power we've generated and the footwork that goes with it. Five different pieces we're gonna go through. First, my thought process here behind why we're gonna go after power before we try to get precision in our shot. The importance of leverage, how to catch always like a shooter, which we're gonna develop over the next four modules, common problems, and how to attack from the catch. So power before precision. What I see most coaches working on, what most players are trained to do is what I call shooting from the elbow up. It just means they're only shooting when they practice their technique. They're shooting a form shot really close to the basket with only one arm and not moving any other part of their body. What we've developed is what we call activated form shooting. It just means we're activating all the muscle groups in our lower body to generate power underneath the ball. Here's an example of what I see a lot of players doing. And what I used to teach um, several years back before I evolved to what we do now, starting stationary feet, ball on top of your pizza pan position, as we call it, and shooting from the elbow up. Activated form shooting means we're starting in a lunge or driving power forward and down into our feet and then driving up as our ankles, knees, and hips extend up into our shoulders and into our fingertips, driving power all the way through. We're going to get into more detailed breakdown of the pieces that go with this to really maximize how much power you can create. So the importance of leverage. Shoulders over toes is the first thing that we work on, really uh, universal with just about every player I work with now, is trying to tilt their shoulders forward at the point of the catch. Or in this case, slowing it down with our activated form shot at the point of their step. So when you step forward and hit the floor with that right foot, if you're a right-handed shooter, we want our shoulders to be leaned forward over our toes at that point. So we're driving up out of that leverage position, kind of creating the potential energy with that position before we drive our hips forward to really release that energy. If we're driving upward with our shoulders as we drive forward with our hips, we really maximize the use of our glutes and our hamstrings, all the biggest muscles of our body, uh, driving it like a lever to send power into our shoulders and eventually our hands into the ball. And then the last part is finishing on our toes. So if you ever shot at the free throw line, standing still without jumping, uh, if you miss short, you'll probably notice that your heels were down at the end versus driving all the way up on your toes really again, maximizes another leverage point, which is the flexion of your feet, pushing down on the floor, driving your heels up, finishing up on your toes, really optimizes how much power you can deliver, especially from a standstill. And then when we have a jump, these three pieces really stack up to give you a lot more power and potential for deeper range shooting. What we're looking at here is the shoulder over toes position. From the profile view, you can see when I'm driving forward, how far forward the shoulders go out in front of the toes before driving upward, really maximizing that leverage. And here we're gonna see the example of hips forward. If we can start with that shoulder over toe position, driving the hips, exaggerating it even as you're practicing this, so the hips are forward of your toes, can really create uh, a lot more power than just going to vertical. And then footwork, building up from the base, we want to catch like a shooter means our feet have to be ready to shoot at all times. So what we use is what we call a stride stop, more commonly called a one-two stop. It gives us a lot of consistency and control. And I always like to point out the difference between this and a jump stop, which a lot of coaches teach and has its uses. But 
a jump stop has kind of the problem of inputs equal outputs, right? If you're off balance going into a jump stop, it's a lot harder to recalibrate before you're jumping out of it into your shot. Stride stop allows you to get one foot on the ground, kind of recalibrate by the time your second foot hits the ground, you can often regain your balance and still come up with a really balanced jump in the air. And then the consistency of rhythm uh, is the other part. We're going to step with our weak foot first. So if I'm right-handed, I'm going left and then right. That gives me a lot of consistency, power, rhythm, everything we want in a shot to help us shoot deeper range. Uh, timing of this, we like to practice it with a bounce pass initially as you get used to it. So we're going to wait until the pass bounces before starting our first step so that we can go quickly after the bounce and meet the ball as it's bouncing up to our hands, we're moving down and forward into it to ultimately catch with our shoulders over our toes and bounce up into our jump. And then on the video here, we're gonna show you some common problems that go with this, just common errors as you're practicing it on your own. Uh, we're gonna be troubleshooting a lot of these with you when we're on, our, on the court for our first workout, but good stuff for you to be aware of as you go home to practice. So adding the jump into the mix, now that we've established our mechanical Precision to generate a lot of power. We're working on our stride stop left and then right, just tying it back into what we did with one step. We're now doing two steps. And the first step happens after the bounce. So we end up with a quick, quick jump rhythm and trying to hit that every time the same by being in time with the ball bouncing helps a lot. Just developing that consistency, we can eventually move that to a chest pass and have the same rhythm. Common problems we're gonna have, one is that we're going to have our hips go back as our shoulders go forward. So we might have exaggerated that shoulders forward position to catch, but we tend to stay there as we jump and our hips are popping back. We're actually losing a lot of power out our backside and we end up missing short. Problem number two, we're gonna rotate in the air. Even though we might've had even toes at the catch, when we push the ball, we're used to pushing with our shoulders. So we're going to rotate in the air and end up twisting, shooting across opposite our hand. So if we're a right hand shooter here, we're going to be missing left. Third is we're going to have our shoulders back. So we might bend our legs. It's what commonly is told to players to help you get more power is bend your knees, bend your knees, bend your knees. But if we bend our knees a lot, even if our shoulders are up, we're going to send that power up and backwards rather than forward toward the basket. And then the last part here is catching the ball low. We want to catch to our chin. If we're catching it down at our hips and our waist, it's going to affect our shot a lot. So trying to always pull that ball, catch to chin, same as we started at chin when we were doing our activated form shot. And then finally, catching like a shooter to attack. So we're trying to get the same stride stop and then reach right leg before dribble. So we end up dribbling with left foot and we get our full three strides to basket. And this one takes a little work to get the timing right. When you go fast after you've got it in your head how it's supposed to work, it actually feels comfortable and smooth. And despite doing it slow motion where it may feel like a travel, it's not a travel as long as you release the ball the same time as your pivot foot. So what is a pivot foot? Pivot foot is simply the first foot that hits the floor after you catch a pass. So same would apply if you're dribbling. First foot that hits the floor when you pick up the dribble. As soon as you have possession of the ball, assuming you're in the air moving toward the ball, the first foot that touches down becomes your pivot foot, which means it cannot move. Some people get that confused. The pivot foot is the one that's stationary. The other foot's the one that can move, I like to say, anywhere you want. You can do a lot of dance moves with one foot, but the pivot foot can't move until the ball's released from your hand. So that might be a pass, might be a shot, might be into your dribble in this case. The go step is what we call our right hand drive, just reaching our right foot, using that principle of a pivot foot to our advantage by pivoting and reaching our right foot forward with our left foot being our pivot foot, and then being able to tack forward into a dribble from that lunge position. Step over is what we call the drive to our weak hand. So if our left foot's our pivot foot, our right foot needs to move, it's gonna step over our left foot in order to attack with our left hand dribble. Um, just like we would talk about crossover, changing hands with the ball, we call it a step over when we change sides with our feet. And then lastly, we're gonna see our right and left hand pull up jump shot. 
where we can dribble a slightly different timing than our drive and try to gather into a stride stop shot again at the end, trying to get off quickly and again, find that consistency of power and balance the same as we would on catching a pass. So here is our go step, catching like a shooter, reaching right foot, dribbling with left foot, and then we get two more strides all the way to the basket. A uh, big advantage again here is that we're able to reach with a pivot before we release ball and pivot foot at the same time in order to run and extend our stride. So we're really getting four steps out of one dribble to get to that basket. When we go to our left hand, this is our step over. It's taking our right foot and stepping across our left toe to reach across to the left side of the basket. Let's see that one again. Left, right, catch, dribble with right foot at the same time as our left hand dribble. That is our step over footwork. Right hand dribble pull up. This is a little different rhythm. Same concept applies. Left, right, catch, dribble with the right foot this time. And we're going to get another stride stop, left, right to shot. When we go to the left hand, we like to call this the popcorn dribble. We're going to dribble before our right foot and go right left. So it's still a step over motion, but we're going after the dribble. So we pop the dribble out ahead of us and go right left to go stride, stop, and jump. So summarize, power before precision. We're trying to generate all the power we can muster without jumping to really maximize how powerful you are when you add a jump. It makes it feel easy. Uh, the importance of leverage. We talked about shoulders over toes and driving the hips forward, making sure we are maximizing the leverage of our upper body to help us generate power from our actual jump. Uh, catching like a shooter, trying to get that stride stop rhythm always the same, timing it with the pass, trying to have consistency of feet so that we have balance, power, rhythm, everything to start our shot from the floor up. Common problems again, we're going to have issues with our shoulders not being forward, our rotation in the air, and how we catch that pass can all affect our shot quite a bit. Trying to dial it in, catching to our chin, jumping and landing on even toes, starting with shoulders over toes. All those pieces really stack up to um, contribute to an efficient shot with power. And next week, we'll talk more about the pieces that make you more precise by solving those problems early. We can layer that on and be a lot higher percentage shooter very quickly. And then lastly, we just talked about attacking from the catch, making sure that we catch like a shooter and we know how to move our feet without traveling to enable us to reach past the defender, ideally with one dribble to get all the way to the basket and then being able to set up our footwork to stop and shoot over top of the defender with a pull-up jump shot to either side. That's it for week one. I'll see you on the court.